So yesterday we filmed a daily driving my pre-runner video and it's actually the longest I've driven my truck since I got the new wheels and tires on. And I did balance them with balance beads this time, but I felt like on the highway it was shaking just a little bit more than usual. So I went ahead and jacked up the truck last night and spun all four corners of the tires to listen for beads. And one of them, I don't hear any beads in. So they may have missed a tire. Maybe they thought it was my spare and they didn't put beads in that one for some reason. So I'm getting ready to take it off and roll it just to see if I can get the beads to dislodge, if they happen to be stuck together, or if they're in a bag. I'm pretty sure they use the ones we just scoop right out of a bin. So I don't think there's a bag in there. And then I'm gonna swap it with the spare because the spare, if I hit it with the rubber mallet, there is beads in there. So maybe they just miss a tire and that might make my truck drive a lot smoother on the road. So I'm gonna do that first. And then hopefully that makes it drive a lot smoother. And then I can finish off putting some miles on it because I'm trying to reset my readiness monitors for smog. So right now there's no pending code luckily. So I'm gonna try to put some more miles on it after I get this tire situation figured out. And then if the spare is fine, then I'll just call them back out to put some beads into the other tire. And then once that's all good, hopefully I can smog the truck. And then I'm going to bring it back here and we're gonna do the motor mounts. Just from off-roading, the motor just moves a lot and rips apart those motor mounts very quickly. And I actually think that might be part of the reason why I'm having smog issues. I think that the EGR valve that's mounted to the firewall, the vacuum hose is actually getting pulled off when the motor is shifting a little bit since the motor mounts are blown. So hopefully that'll kind of fix that issue as well. So we are gonna be using our new Badland three-ton off-road jack. This thing is a beast. So I just took off both rear tires and the spare tire just to check them all out off the truck. Only because last night when I had the entire rear end lifted up and I was spinning them, obviously the other side tire is also spinning with the rear end. So it was hard to tell exactly if there was like a light sound coming from the beads and I was just hearing things because it was late. And I was kind of upset because I was thinking maybe they didn't put some beads in one of the tires. So today I took them all off and in the spare and on the good side, I can hear the beads. Literally as soon as you take it off the truck and bounce it on the floor, you can hear beads just rolling around in there. And I'll try to get it on video, but if you just roll it like down this driveway, you'll hear the beads like swooshing as they go. And in the one that I suspected does not have any beads, you can't hear them at all. You could also take a rubber mallet and hit the rubber on the bottom and hear the beads kind of bouncing around. I did that on the spare tire last night from the bottom. So I'm gonna try to show you guys that on video and see if you can hear the beads. And then we'll know that this one doesn't have any beads. I use a mobile tire company that came out and it kind of sucks because it saved me a lot of time. I took off the wheels and tires for them and had them set down there with my new wheels. They mounted and balanced them. They're the ones who actually recommended doing balance beads. Already one thing happened when they left and I looked at the back of my wheels, every single wheel had a black plastic ring on it and it's like the protector ring that comes in the shipping box. So I took off all the front ones but the back one was still on the wheel. So they actually had to come back and use little snips and cut it and pull it out. So that was kind of crappy that they missed that. So when they left and I saw that, I texted them and they told me that those are built in to protect the wheel. Correct me if I'm wrong, I've never heard of leaving those on for whatever reason. It literally stuck out like a quarter inch on the inside of the wheel, it's just thick plastic. She said, I can have them come back if you'd like. And I said, yes, they came back and they cut them all off. And he did say that because the same color as the wheel, he didn't realize that they were there. So they cut them all off, used some snips and pulled it out. But now that if they forgot to put beads in one of the wheels, that kind of sucks because that's two issues now. So I'm out here in a hundred degree weather, swapping out the tire just because of somebody else's mishap. So, I mean, I get it, mistake hap mistakes happen, but more than one thing, when I spent 300 bucks to get these mounted balance, kinda sucks. Okay, so I'm gonna try to put the camera kinda low so you guys can see the tire and see if the microphone picks up this noise. You can literally hear the beats. And all of them sound like that, except for this one. Okay, so that was pretty annoying. Their mobile service isn't available right now, so I have to take the spare into their shop. It's like in the middle of town to go get balanced. So that's gonna be my spare for now, and then I'll take it this week to go get balanced. But also I just wanted to give the Badland Harbor Freight three ton off-road jack a little shout out. This thing is a beast. I've used it like two or three times in the last week just to kind of lift up the truck to look over things and whatnot. So that is pretty cool. And I'm looking for a mount because I'm debating on mounting this on the back of the truck somewhere instead of that little aluminum racing jack that I had before so we'll see it's a pretty big jack but it's also pretty useful so i'm not sure if i'm gonna keep a small jack on here or swap it out for this big one or leave this big one in the garage not too sure yet but i'm gonna torque these down put it back on the floor and then go drive it and make sure that it is driving smoothly okay so yesterday my driving impressions were off just a little bit when it came to me talking about the bumpiness and even some of the noise because just for a quick section i'm on the highway like going out of town one hand on the wheel 
and barely any bumpy vibrations. I mean, no more than a stock truck with 37 inch tires would have driving down the highway at this speed. And I'm not saying there's no bumps at all, but yesterday, I'd say it's like cut in half from what it was yesterday. I thought something was off, but it's been a while since I drove the truck like that on the highway across town. I haven't taken the truck out of town in years or on a far trip. So like this, I can drive 100 miles on the highway to get to a spot, to get to a destination. And uh, I mean, obviously I wish I had cruise control and all those kind of things still, but this is a lot more doable. So that mobile company kind of screwed me on that and I just didn't check it. I remember hearing the beads when I was putting them on that day too, but I didn't bother to check all of them because I assumed that they were all done. So that kind of sucks. But anyways, I'm gonna just keep going this way to put some more miles on it. Hopefully reset my readiness monitors. That way I can go smog real quick so I can get my registration renewed. Here's the best POV I can give you guys. The camera is like under my chin right now. Getting a whopping eight to 10 miles to the gallon. But this isn't bad at all. Again, some music going, not too bad. And I plan on loosening up some of the loose panels on the dash and whatnot that sometimes makes some noise. And uh, adding some more soundproofing to the roof and doors, whatnot, just down the line. But it's not too bad for now for the amount of trips we do. But definitely having the balance wheel on there yesterday would have helped out a lot. That was a long day of driving. Okay, so I went on that drive to make sure the tires were all balanced and I went out kind of far and the readiness monitors did reset. So right now I should pass smog. In Nevada, you can have one monitor uh, not set for this year. So I have one that's not set. It usually takes forever for that last one to get. But everything else is cleared, including the EVAP one, which is what usually triggers the EGR code that I was getting. So we are at the smog station around the corner. I brought Lexi with me just because uh, sometimes they make me take my hood off to check underneath the hood for whatever reason. Even though in Nevada, they don't really, there's no like carb legal requirements for all of our stuff. But they like to look for the smog tag under the hood but they won't fail you if you don't have it, but they check it anyways. They usually pl just plug in the computer here and then it'll scan for code. Sometimes they check that or the gas tank and then you pass. It really depends on the smog tech. So I'm gonna do that. And then my other truck actually needs to be smogged also, which that one doesn't have any problems. So I might just run home, grab that one and then smog it today as well. Okay, so the truck passed smog. So I knew there wasn't something wrong with the truck. It's just that hose, I think, coming disconnected from the motor mounts being loose. And it finally had a chance to reset. I don't drive the truck enough to go through all those readiness monitors. So going out yesterday, on purpose and putting miles on it obviously helped pinpoint the issue and uh, it passed smog so shaky and bumpy are two different things right bumpy the suspension's a little stiff the roads are a little crappy it's always gonna feel a little more bumpy than a nice plush car or stock truck but it was really shaky yesterday so today more bumpy no shaky I need a